Hi and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be talking about retail banks. So let's get started. So retail banks are also known as consumer banks and they are typically what you think of when I say a bank. It's a place that you go to for your usual banking needs. Now, most retail banks also offer services towards businesses, especially small businesses. And sometimes people say retail banks are also commercial banks, which is true, but not all commercial banks provide personal banking services for people who are not high net worth individuals. Yes, retail banks are consumer banks and yes they can also be commercial banks but not all commercial banks offer services to all consumers so let's talk about some services and products and features that retail banks offer well first they offer basic deposit accounts so we're talking your savings accounts your checking accounts and also your money market accounts if you don't know what a money market account is then watch this video two payment services. Think of this as a bank being able to offer you a debit card or a credit card as a means towards making payments for other services or products. Loans and mortgages. Most retail banks offer a variety of loan products like auto loans, home loans, RV loans, personal loans, etc. Financial planning and investment services. A lot of retail banks have a separate part of the bank that handles investments and often there are financial advisors available to their consumers consumers, members, etc., that you can utilize to find investment products that would benefit your personal circumstances. Online and mobile banking. Retail banks generally have a pretty decent app to do a bunch of things such as mobile check deposits, checking on your account totals, being able to start a loan from the app, as well as reach customer support. Another feature of retail banks is the fact that they usually have a large brand network meaning that they, for the most part, generally have retail stores available for you to go in and handle your banking services. Customer service. Retail banks have usually a wide variety of ways to reach somebody in order to get help with your banking needs, whether it be in person with a teller, over the phone, via chat, where you can go either through the app or their website and type in an inquiry and then reach somebody. Consumer protection. Retail banks are required by law and federal and state regulation in order to provide services that are related to fair lending practices, consumer protection, identity and fraud. There's a lot of regulations in order to help safeguard the money of individuals. So speaking on that last point, let's talk about some of the regulating agencies that oversee banks. So in the United States, banks are overseen by a few different regulatory bodies, some of them federal and some of them at a state level. So let's talk about four of the bigger ones. One, Office of the Comptroller of Currency, otherwise known as OCC. So the OCC is an independent branch within the US Department of Treasury. It oversees and regulates national banks banks and federal savings association. The OCC ensures that banks operate safely and soundly, especially in regards to consumer protection, as well as following regulations and laws in regards to how they handle your money. Two is the Federal Reserve System, otherwise known as the Fed. So the Federal Reserve is the central bank of the United States, and it has the supervisory authority over all federally chartered banks. So the Fed's primary responsibilities is ensuring economic and financial stability, as well as conducting monetary policy and supervising and regulating the banks that are under its control. Three, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or the FDIC. The FDIC is an independent agency that tries to insure deposits in order to give people more confidence when using U.S. banking systems. It also supervises state chartered banks that are not members of the Federal Reserve System, and it acts as the receiver of failed institutions. Essentially, the FDIC so is trying to improve people's confidence in the U.S. banking system. That's where you'll commonly see like the FDIC insured logo on banks where you are covered up to a certain amount. And this is really helpful when banks fail. And lastly is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau or the CFPB. So the CFPB is another independent agency that whole purpose is 
is to protect the consumer and that is through ensuring that banks are following policies for transparency, disclosing consumer basic protections like fair non-discriminatory practices as well as providing resources for consumers education and making sure that in cases of fraud that the consumer is not responsible. What are some pros for using retail banks? Well, first one is convenient access. Generally, retail banks not only have brick and mortar banks that are available and in some retail banking chains, some can be found in every state. There is also a wide variety of ATM networks that they belong to, allowing you to have easy and convenient access to your money as long as you can find one of those ATMs. Diverse banking services. So like I mentioned before, retail banks offer a wide variety of services including covering investments, basic savings, checking accounts, money market accounts, CDs, etc. So there's a wide variety of products and services that a retail bank can offer which can help you with your money goals. Deposit insurance. So most retail banks are in fact members of the Federal Reserve System so therefore they are covered with FDIC insurance. Now FDIC insurance covers up to $250,000 per person Person per bank however there are additional stipulations which is something that I may make another video about so tune into the future for that but essentially 250,000 per person per bank and this insurance covers you in case the bank fails so you're covered and ensured that you will get back at least $250,000 of your money that was put into a bank financial stability because retail banks are so heavily regulated and have so many reporting authorities over them it helps to maintain the fact that they are going to be financially stable as they will be adhering to best practices as well as risk management practices in order to ensure that they can stay financially stable for as long as they possibly can. And the last is customer support. Retail banks have dedicated customer support teams to help you, the customer, and that could be in person, over the phone, via these chats, as well as email. What are some cons for using retail banks? One, are fees and charges. So retail banks are banks that are trying to make money off of you and so there may be additional fees and charges on certain services or products in order to make more money. These fees can include ATM withdrawal fees, overdraft fees, account maintenance fees, account service surcharges, etc. Stringent loan approval process. So retail banks, in order to remain profitable, tend to be a little bit more risk adverse where they are more conservative in their approach. And so when they are going to do loan products and etc., they may have higher criteria in order to qualify for a loan. Less competitive interest rates. Again, retail banks are in it for the money and so the interest rates that they may offer for loans might be higher than other banking institutions as well as the interest on their saving products might be lower. Also, retail banks have generally higher overhead costs and therefore they try to recoup these costs with fees and interest rates. And lastly is limited community focus. So what I mean by this is that retail banks generally are available all around and therefore they may not have interest in the local community for where that particular branch is located because they have so many different branches. So yeah that pretty much sums the general basics around retail banks. Do me a favor give this video a like. If you aren't subscribed already subscribe and if you are subscribed thank you so much. If you could please share this video and channel with people who might be interested in these type of topics. If you have any questions or you just want to say hi, leave a comment down below and I will be happy to reply to them. And as always, I hope you have a good one. Bye!